Let's pray. Father, we praise you for the privilege of coming before you and giving you the worship that you deserve. Lord, we know that we are here only by your grace. We're here by your grace that you afforded to us through the blood of your Son on this cross. I pray that as we remember him, that you would be pleased with what we say and what we think and what we do. Lord, that all of this might give you the glory that you deserve. And we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Please turn with me in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians 3. And as you're doing that, think about something about yourself that you can be tempted to put your confidence in. Maybe it's your skill set at work. Maybe it's your experience as a parent. Maybe you're really good at solving problems. Whatever it is, it's something that you're tempted to say, I've got this under control. Paul is writing to the church in Philippi, and he tells them that as Christians, they are to put no confidence in their own flesh. He also tells them that if anybody has any reason to put any confidence in the flesh, it's him. And then he recites his long list of qualifications and credentials as a Jew of Jew and a Hebrew of Hebrews. Follow along with me what he writes in Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 9. He says, whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but rubbish that I may gain Christ and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness that comes through God on the basis of faith. In this passage, we see two things that a believer has that will help them remember Jesus this morning. See that a believer has a better possession in Christ and a believer has a better righteousness in Christ. In verse 8, Paul counts all things to be loss in view of the surpassing greatness and value of knowing Christ. When he talks about the surpassing value of Christ, he's referring to a relationship with Christ. This is a relationship which is superior in rank and in value and in worth to all other relationships. It's one that's not equaled or surpassed by any other relationship. That's because to know Christ, to have the intimacy of abiding with Christ, to be able to come to him when we are weary and heavy laden, and to have the privilege of joining with him in his sufferings, that is more satisfying than anything that's to be offered by any human relationship. And compared to Christ, Paul counts all things to be loss. And the word loss here is a business term. It's a term that describes an unsuccessful transaction on the part of the buyer that resulted in a penalty for them. So to count all things as loss is to understand that to esteem any other thing in the way that you esteem Christ and your relationship with Christ is actually to bring harm to your relationship with Christ. And at the end of verse 8, Paul counts all of his former accomplishments, all of his credentials under the Jewish law, he counts them to be rubbish. The word rubbish here talks about something that not only is worthless, but it's something that's detestable. It's something that's repulsive. That's because Jesus is such a prized possession that anything that would threaten to supplant him and take his place a priority in our life should be repulsive and detestable to us. So Jesus is a better possession. But Jesus also offers a better righteousness to the believer. In verse 9, there are two kinds of righteousness that are listed there. The first one is a righteousness that's of our own. It's a righteousness that belongs to man. It's part of man. It's inherent in us. It's who we are. This is the righteousness that we bring to God ourselves in our vain attempt to please God with what we do before him. But this righteousness is offensive to God. This is repulsive to God because the righteousness that we bring to God is from a law that God intended to show us our need for a different kind of righteousness, a different kind of holiness, one we find in Christ. And that's the second righteousness that we read about at the end of this verse. It's a righteousness that comes from God This is a righteousness that's from a different place than man. It originates with God. 
It belongs to God, so it's God's to give to us. God gives this righteousness to the person who has faith in Christ, only to the person who has faith in Christ. To have faith in Christ alone is to have a strong conviction that Jesus and Jesus alone is the only means by which a person can place their confidence for salvation. God gives this righteousness to the person for whom Jesus is their Savior and their Lord. He's their Savior because he trusts in the redeeming work that Christ performed on the cross on his behalf. And Jesus is his Lord because he lives in obedience to the instructions and the commands of Jesus. So in Christ we have a better righteousness because that is the only righteousness that is acceptable and that is pleasing to God. And notice in the middle of that, between those two kinds of righteousness, you see the little word but. That word is so important in this passage because that word tells us that these two kinds of righteousness are mutually exclusive. They can't be found in the same person at the same time. A person either possesses a righteousness of their own or they possess a righteousness of God that is through faith in Christ. If you're here today, and you possess the kind of righteousness that is through faith in Christ, would you join us in taking the elements today? As they come to you, will you hold them and consider the kindness and the goodness of God, that he gave you a relationship with Christ, and that he gave you the righteousness that he considers to be acceptable in his sight? When you've done that, you can take the elements on your own. If you have a relationship with Christ and you're a follower with Christ, but there is some part of your life in which you are not counting all things as loss compared to the surpassing value of knowing Christ. Take this time to forsake what you are presently not considering and you're considering above and in place of Christ and then take the elements in a worthy manner. And lastly, if you're here today and your plan is to present God with your righteousness, a righteousness that's of you, you need to know this, God rejects that righteousness. God does not accept that righteousness. The only righteousness that he accepts is atonement and payment for your sin is the righteousness of his son. But that righteousness can be yours today. If you submit to him as your savior and your Lord, you understand him to be the only one through which you can be redeemed from your place under God's law. If you do that, then take the elements and join us today and rejoice with us as the elements come to you. If you're not willing to do that, just take the elements and pass them by because this is a time for believers to remember what Christ has done for them. So men, come and serve us and take the elements on your own.